Okay, uh, hi, I'm Simon, welcome. Listen, there's this question that actors, it's a good question for acting. It is how, how do you um, feel emotion and uh, how do you know, I mean, is it real emotion or is it fake emotion, right? So you've got all kinds of situations with these um, acting, right? So we're gonna look at this, this is simple. So we're, we're gonna understand that first of all, any visceral response that you have is a real emotion, right? It's something that you have a felt sense about. So you're, you're self-activating your emotion or your emotional preparation, emotional activation, right? So there's the there's biggest, biggest thing here. You want to validate yourself. Now, a visceral response is something that will shoot through you, right? Like you might feel shivers or you might feel uh, cold. Like literally, you might feel cold, and it, it, you know, the emotions work in this mysterious way. It's like this, and you might have these sensations, or right? maybe um, you're feeling really, really upset, and you you feel hot-headed. Literally, that is where the expression comes from. Is that the emotion actually causes the head to feel heat? And this, these are all visceral responses. But look, the simple thing about this is that you want to validate yourself. But the biggest mistake actors make, and it's key, it is key. Look, you're going off, a lot of people will choose, they'll build up these incredible storylines, and they're great storylines. Maybe it's artificial insemination, maybe it's an adoption, they've never seen their adopted mother, brother, father, whatever it is, right, sister. So you look at this, and you go, these are great things, and they're so excited over their really, really exciting idea about what they want to do for their acting is that they forget to emotionally prepare. Now, that is the biggest pitfall that you can do when you're acting because, look, you're going to have the tendency, myself included, if I work with the technique that I just described, which is just going off of an idea, I'm going to have the very, very, very commonality that it's most likely going to come out that I'm going to play my idea in my acting. It's just the way it is. Now, I've seen over 30,000 acting exercises. Way over. Okay? So, look, the key about all this is you want to be able to work with all those things and have all those elements of your back storyline, all the stuff that you're setting up to be able to be supportive of your, and, and with your emotional preparation. But you still want to do your emotional preparation and then you still want to do your emotional activation. Now, emotional activation is another thing. Uh, by the way, I wear these for, um, for reading. Uh, the contrast, the colored tints help the, the contrast. So the, the reality of this is you're working in a way so that you can be able to activate your emotion. Okay, so what does that feel like, right? <laughs> it's terrible sometimes. When you're working with an active emotion, oh, you feel it. And sometimes you'll activate something and all of a sudden you'll find out, oh, you didn't think that you were that kind of a mean of a person. Or you didn't think that you had that kind of mean streak in you. Or you didn't know where this thing was coming from or that thing. That's part of the discovery. And then those adjustments that you personally choose to make, or sometimes it will be with the teacher or director, then you work with, with whatever it is that you accept, right? And then that is an element that, that expands you and your humanity, right? You decide, I mean, why is it that you're always feeling uh, um, agitated? Or why is it agitation? Or is there an extreme thing? Or um, is there some bad personality trait that always comes out in your work? A lot of people have this. A lot, a lot of people. So the key about this is is that, is, is being willing to accept that those bad traits are gonna come out of your work if you're working authentic, if you're working truthful. And that's just something that's going to have to be part of it. And you might look at an actor that's done this a year, two years, and you might say, you know, it's funny because, you know, you're watching their work and you don't see any bad traits coming out in them. They don't have any uh, roller coaster runaway moments or they, they're, they're a little scattered here, that none of that. Well, that's because they've trained. That's because they've actually trained their emotions. They, they're actually, but if you look at some of these people, and I have, I've watched major, major people train techniques in this work. And I can tell you from beginning, even before they became teachers, that I, I was able to see exactly what it was in their training and their processes of training. So it's very, very good what I'm saying. It should be very helpful.
But the next thing that's, that's important, and, and we're going to keep this short, um, contrast um, is, is the contrast of that. So the two things, right? You've got your emotional range that you're intending to be able to spark. Okay. Now, your, your job is to be able to spark your emotion, right? That is talent. By the way, that is the ability to have talent. Okay, so your ability to be able to create your own self-activation. Acting is activation, right? So your ability to say, okay, this is an emotional range. Now, I have a 1,200 plus emotions list to be able to help this. So it helps you to be able to expand not only working with five emotions, which, by the way, a lot of the top actors work with maybe only two or three at most emotions. And that's a sad truth still today. Um, a lot. Uh, some people don't. Some people have a wider range. But the reality of this is you want to pick a range of emotion and then be able to self-activate it. Now, what happens if you pick the activation of um, rage, right? And for some reason, you're supposed to be rageful for a scene, right? And then all of a sudden, instead of being rageful, you're in a situation, all of a sudden, regret pours out. All of a sudden, you find yourself in like in the experience of your regret. I would suggest work with it. Work through it. You can always do another exercise. You, the, the good thing is that you've activated it. Now, if you're on a film set and that's not going to exactly fit, you've got to decide with your own discretion. What do you think? Is that going to work or is it not going to work? So, so, but if you're in any kind of, of working rehearsal, I would absolutely go with what's activating you. You never know. And a lot of directors might like you experimenting with those different things as long as you've intended to go in the proper range, right? The range of whatever it is that you're working on. All right, so the second thing to wrap this whole thing up is the contrast of emotional range, okay, is conviction. All right, now, I can't tell you. I mean, how many, uh, uh, I'm not making fun of people, but, but trust fund babies or, or people that have been given roles that never act in their life and they're told that they have to come to acting classes and learn acting because they've already gotten the role and even though the casting people haven't casted for it yet, this is the way the industry sometimes works, right? But the reality of this is that they come in and they, they, they think that acting is the ability to convince themselves that they're angry or convince themselves that they're regretful or convince themselves that they're happy and then have the other person agree with their emotions. That's not exactly what I'm, that's not really going to win you an Oscar. Although, what will these days, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a gamble. But the reality is this, that working with yourself is that you're going to work with self-activated emotion. So you're, you're, you're not concentrating on trying to become headstrong, right? You're not concentrating on trying to be convincing the other person that you are something. You're, you're going to set off an emotion and then have a new discovery. So I always tell people this. I said that there's a being side of the work, which is what I'm talking about now. And then there's the doing side of the work, which is the interaction. So you've got the being side of the work, and then you've got the, the doing side of the work. So you've got the interaction. When it comes time, after you've done all of these things, and, and simple, simple process, right? You make sure that you didn't marry your storyline. You, you didn't go off of an impulse of your storyline, right? And then, then all of a sudden, you still do your emotional preparation and you have your storyline. So now you're, you're really prepared. There's a lot going on in you. You've got, now you've got something that's, that's more full, right? And then your only job at that point is to one, put it into the knock or put it into the first moments of the, of the, of, of the first moment, but then to receive. It's deafening. You want to be able to receive. Now, when you can figure this simple, 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 simple technique out for yourself, it might take you a hundred exercises to be able to do this completely consistently. And that is completely okay. I have a course that's 110 um, uh, days of acting. You can actually do it. Uh, all these, I love over 1,100 activities. It's fantastic. But the reality is uh, you can work so well with this so that you've got the emotion. You're getting the emotion. And you're able to activate something that's active in you. You're not convincing yourself. So listen, if you would boop the like, the, boop the, the like button or whatever it's called, and um, uh, please, um, share this, whatever it is. Um, and thanks very much. Okay. Appreciate it.
Okay, so I teach people how to get upset. I have a lot of fun teaching people how to literally purposefully upset themselves. Actually waking their own activations up so that they're emotionally activated. There's something that they can get upset about within a ballpark of emotion. But the key, the absolute key, is I don't want you to carry around that stuff in your life. That's what's called acting baggage. You want to be able to learn a technique. I have to be able to tell you that it's, it would be a disservice for me to teach you all of these incredible techniques on how to access yourself as an artist without reminding you very nicely that you don't need your acting baggage in life. So feel free. Work on processes where you have a release time after you're doing your acting. And what this will do is it will actually amplify your work because it will give your acting muscles the break that they need in order to get the rest that they need so that your work will be even stronger. Okay, thanks very much.